Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. It was another tough week for USA Greco as the world team left France with five wins, nine losses, and not a single piece of medal. One of the few U.S. victories came from Mason Manville, who secured a late takedown and two passivity points to top Sweden's Ensberg 4-2. In the second round, Manville met up with Georgia Sulakadze and scored the only technical points of the bout on a body lock, but somehow lost on passivity. Trailing now 3-2. Manville took the Georgians back, but time expired, and Manville was eliminated in just his second bout. Almost every single U.S. match was determined on passivity. This is a huge problem, not just for the Americans, but for the entire sport. I mean, it's a, it's a joke. I mean, Manville pushed the pace here. If you look back at the match, you know, his butt is in the center of the mat almost the whole time. Greco opened up a wound here, and then just you know, gas just pulled on. I mean, this whole passivity thing, I mean, they changed the rules. Now it's just a, an absolute mess. Well, Pat Smith reached the quarterfinals with a win over Matus Morbitzer of the Czech Republic. The former Minnesota Gopher faced the Asian bronze medalist Azangulov in the quarters and scored the first two points on a step out and passivity. Azangulov would open up his offense in the second, hitting a pair of four-point throws to take the bout 8-2. So at least there was some offense this time, Tony, even if it was the other guy doing it. Yeah, I mean, this is this is true, but the Americans just lacked offense all around. I mean, almost look, if you look at this match, it looked like it was scripted in almost all the Greco matches, I guess. It just felt like it was, you know, you feel me, I feel you, which is typical in Greco, but I just felt like we were kind of waiting for them to make the you know the offensive move and you can, you know if you don't try to score you can't get points you and can't you, win and you wonder why there was very few fans in the stands all right two-time Olympian Ben Provisor dropped a heartbreaker in the opening round at 85 and was eliminated after just one bout down two one Provisor powered through a second period push out to take the lead on criteria but the Ukrainian answered with a four point throw at the buzzer and took the match six two now in a post match interview Provisor said he will be moving to Pennsylvania to train at the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club so he left the OTC to train with the Florida Jets made an Olympic team and now he's leaving for Penn State. I think I remember him saying, you know, back uh, when he wa wanted to leave the OTC that, you know, there's no one there for him. No one's pushing him. No one cares about him, whatever. And then, you know, he goes to Florida. And now he's really saying the same thing. He's going to Penn State, which I don't even know they have anybody in Greco out there. So, you know, blaming others, you know, we don't know the, the you know, I've talked to a few people that we don't really know, you know, what's actually happening. So, I mean, we need to find, find a little bit more information of why Ben feels like he's being mistreated or not getting the attention that he deserves because he, he's been on the team for a while. He's been around for a while. So at some point, you know, he's going to have enough of it and hang up his shoes. You bet. Hang him up indeed. 20-year-old Giangelo Hancock scored on a step out and two passivity points to top his Turkish opponent in the first round at 98. Waiting in the quarterfinals, however, was the 2016 Olympic champ, Alex Ion. The Armenian held a three-point advantage at the break. Hancock pulled within two on a passivity call, but a four-point throw and a failed challenge attempt and a takedown gave the eventual world champ the 10-1 tech. Hancock was drawn back into Repajaj where he fell to the Asian world champion Saladze. The Iranian scored on a pair of passivity points and a step out to take the bout 3-1. Still a ton of upside for a kid who's only been wrestling for three years, Tony. Yeah, he didn't get a medal, but he continues to push himself, and I feel like he's going for it. For the offense, um, you know, he, he needs more matches as, po as possible, especially in international wrestling. You know, hit the junior level, he didn't get what he wanted either, but, you know, really young. I mean, Hancock is really one of the positive things that we took away from this day. All right, we'll take you through the second day of Greco action after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News, thanks to Fairway Food Store. Stay tuned. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Benaveni, Benaveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting and you should too.
right, welcome back. Our recap of the 2017 World Championships continues with the final four athletes in the Greco lineup. Ellis Coleman was dominant in the opening round at 66 kilos. He picked up a pair of takedowns and four step-up points on his way to a first-period tech over his Brazilian opponent, Romanelli. In a controversial quarterfinals bout against Slovakia, officials penalized Coleman for using a stiff arm to the neck during an active pummel. From then on, neither wrestler scored a technical point. Both were called for passivity, and Coleman was eliminated after just two bouts. Coleman's been around a long time, Tony, but he's still a very young guy in my book. I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. You know, Col Coleman is one of those guys that I like to see because he's high risk. You know, I think that when he got uh, those two points, uh, technical points, I, I felt like he just kind of you know, he felt like he should push the pace against that official. He ended up, you know, really hurting him. He didn't try anything. It was really boring the rest of the match. No one wanted to push the pace. So, I, I, this is a case where I think the officials, you know, maybe stepped in and, and tried to be the tried to be the guy, tried to dictate the match. I mean, he, he definitely did give him a, a hard stiff arm. But I mean, it's Greco Roman wrestling. That's right. All right, competing on his fifth straight world team, the big man Robbie Smith opened the tournament by throwing and pinning his Slovakian opponent, Suze. Leading 2-0 on a passivity call, Smith secured a body lock and tossed Suze for four and finished with the fall. Now in the second round, he faced the veteran Yasmani Acosta Fernandez of Chile. Acosta scored a step out and a point for passivity and forced Smith out of bounds to go up 3-0. Acosta was eventually penalized for passivity, but Smith was unable to put together any kind of offense and dropped the bout 3-1. Smith gave an emotional and blunt interview after the bout. Let's take a look. Talk about your day, man. You, you won a match, lost a tough one. Um, you know, how do you feel out there? Um, and I, I mean, I felt great uh, leading up to this whole tournament. Um, it is, I'm tired of doing this. You know, I'd rather be asked and talked to after I win a medal. But, uh, you know, it's not fun doing this right now, honestly. Uh, so, I mean, I got to change some stuff. Uh, got got to get stronger. I mean, the guy, he's from Cuba who beat me. Mm -hmm. He says Chile, but he's from Cuba. Uh, he was a number two until he defected. And, um, you know, it's, it is what it is, and I lost. He, he played the game right, and... Uh, he, he got the calls. So, you know, it, it's it's hard, uh, it's rough, but you know, it, Greco had a rough tournament. Uh, it just didn't seem like anything would go our way. Um, you know, but our, my team wrestled hard. Everybody wrestled hard. Everybody wrestled, kept their heads up. You know, it, it's 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 just a hard, it's a blow. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hard blow right now. Um, you know, we gotta get back to, I guess, the drawing board and figure something out, uh, change it up. I mean, I, I came into this place feeling great you know, feeling like I had the world in front of me, and uh, I can, I can, I was ready to dominate. But um, you know, first match went out there, wrestled, wrestled well, and uh, it was, it was fine, and got the win. Came off that, was going out second match, feeling really great, you know, feeling awesome. And then he controlled the tie and the wrist, the underhook and the wrist, and I, I mean, couldn't get away from it. And that's it. That's basically all that happened uh, in that match. And then I tried picking it up late towards the end. I thought I almost had that duck under, but uh, you know, it just I couldn't get my head up all the way. So it's what it is. Not a great performance, Tony, but in my opinion, Robbie Smith is still the best wrestler on the team and a guy we cannot afford to lose. Definitely frustrated, being interested to see kind of where his head's at here in a month. You know, Robbie's been consistent at this level. But in the reality of things is he, you know, he's getting older, and you know, you put him up against these foreigners, and you can just there's just a big difference Huge. as far you know. And I just I feel for him because everyone I love Robbie, but you know he's not winning medals at international scene, dominating you know the U.S. Open, World Team Trials. That's great, but you, you know he's not winning world medals, and we don't have any other choice, right? So um, Robbie Smith is going to continue to be the guy, and I, mean, I don't know how we have, I don't how we figure out this weight class. Really, just Greco in general. Did Did you just say Cheney hate? Cheney Haight dropped his first and only bout against world bronze medalist Zabo of Hungary. Haight hit a two-point throw early in the match, but the Hungarian responded in the second, scoring two takedowns and ultimately the pin. Yeah, it's, there's a tough first draw going up against the medalist here. I don't think people pegged him in the first place to get a medal, so you know, I think uh, we just wanted him to have more opportunities to get that you know, those matches in, and you know, go, going up against a medalist, tough to do. All right, America's last chance for a medal was at 59 kilos. That's where Ilda 
Igor Hafezov faced his opponent, Katsharan. The Armenian scored first on a four-point move, but Hafezov hit a takedown to pull within two. Hafezov was penalized late in the first for choking, but continued to press the action and closed the gap on a passivity call in the second. Leading 6-3, the Armenian locked up a late takedown and took the match 8-3. We talked with national coach Matt Lindland on his team's performance in France. I mean, I can't really break it down. In two days, i got to break it down separate days. Uh, our young guys are fighting hard. They need a little more experience. Our, our older guys need to find that fight in them. Uh, again, uh, they, they, they're great athletes. They're incredible competitors. Um, I just didn't see it today, and uh, we've we got to find that fight. How frustrating is that for you? Because, I mean, you've been an elite wrestler. And you know what it's like. I, I mean, I know what it takes, and uh, it's not like I'm not sharing it with them. Uh, you know, but it's... it's uh, Nerves, I, I guess. I, I don't know. Maybe they were wrestling uh, to hold on to something. No, nobody had world titles they were protecting, so I, I don't know what we were saving it for. You know, we saw it right at the end of, of every period. Like, oh, I'm going to go hard. Well, there's four freaking seconds left, man. Let's start that uh, three minutes ago. So. I mean, people want to blame Matt Lindlin, but the talent is just not there right now. We thought perhaps they had turned the corner, but we didn't see it in France. There isn't a coach in the world that can fix this. Yeah, I think uh, you really just have to they talk about going back to the drawing board, getting people to the OTC. I think Matt Lindlin is, still, is working on a few guys to do that, but we have to try to get these guys that are not having success at the freestyle level and having success at Greco, like in Fargo. There's plenty of people that are crossing over that maybe aren't good at Greco, but good at, you know, are good at Greco. Those are the guys we have to, to get in our sport. You know, it's, uh, and Greco is right now, the way the rules are, it's not sexy. People aren't excited no. about it. It's boring to watch. So figuring out the rules and then, you know, if we get, figure out the rules, then we're going to maybe get the kids to, to get excited about it. And I don't think if we even, if we won a couple medals, if we, even even we brought gold medals, I don't think people would be really excited about Grego because it just is boring matches right now. I think perhaps you're right. At the cadet and junior level, we see high-risk moves, but at a senior level, you just don't see it. Crazy that experience actually hurts us, but people are gaming the rules right now. I'm not a fan. All right, check out all the archive matches and the live stream from Paris, France at trackwrestle.com. It's affordable, by the way. We'll be right back. You're watching GWN. Thanks to Adidas Wrestling. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com.
Well, Olympic and world champion Helen Maroulis won four matches by Tech Fall to kick off her world championship quest for gold at 58. None of her matches during the morning session were even close. She outscored her opponent some 42 to nothing. She kept dominating her way in the finals against Tunisia's Marwa Amri. Maroulis struck early with a foot sweep to put Amri to her back for four points. She later countered with a leg attack for a takedown before forcing a step out to extend her lead 7-0. Now the champ sealed a win with a takedown and a gut wrench to defeat Omri 11-0. Let's talk about how you felt out there and, and what was working so well for you. Um, I, I felt great. I really just reminded myself that, uh, again, why I'm here, what I'm doing, and didn't say that I love it. I'm thankful I'm healthy for another year to compete. Had a lot of injuries after taking seven months off coming back. Um, so to be here, to be healthy, it's, it's amazing. And my coaches, uh, Valentin, you know, um, Charles, Eric, uh, Andy Galpin, I think there's like 20 other people I'm missing my sponsors, Sunkiss, the NYCRTC, the Berries, uh, you know, Kim, Art, Andy Barth, everyone that's just pouring into different programs throughout the U.S. Supporting me and Valentina and, and this journey is amazing. You know, Terry Steiner with the women's program and trusting me to take time off when I needed it and to come back when I was ready. I'm, I'm just really grateful for everyone's support. You know, three straight gold medals at three different weight classes. You know, her leg laces are just unbelievable to stop. Everyone knows that they're coming, but as a, you know, a professional athlete, you talk about UFC fighters going up and down weight classes and holding belts. Helen Maroulis is writing history right now by going on all these three weight classes and winning world medals. Pretty special for a USA wrestling. I want to be able to duplicate Helen Maroulis. Put her in a copier. I want, to, I want another Helen Maroulis, and, and want them at every weight. Yeah. And one of them that's coming up, by the way, Becca Leathers, she secured bronze medal at 55 against her opponent from Bulgaria, Dadova. In the first period, Leathers was put on the shot clock, but quickly responded with a takedown and a turn and scored a four-point lead. In the second period, Leathers was put on the shot clock again, but this time could not score, making the score 4-1. In the closing seconds, Dadova forced Leathers to step out, making the final score 4-2 in favor of Leathers to pick up her first senior world medal. I'm just happy, you know, uh, it's a lot of work put in, a lot of time put in by the coaches, by all my teammates, everything, so, I mean, this makes it worth it, right? This is what we do it for. And yeah, what's more to say here, world medal on her first try, get used to Leathers bringing home medals as a a U.S. OTC athlete, you know, I think her being at, you know, out there in Colorado, you know, stepping away from the college scene is only going to help her try to right. mock what Marulis is doing and getting bringing home world medals. Two other U.S. wrestlers in their first senior worlds were eliminated and did not qualify. Mallory Velti at 63 and Victoria Francis at 75. In the opening round, Velti could not stop the takedown attack from her Nigerian opponent, losing 10-0. Francis was beaten in her opener by her opponent from Kazakhstan, 10-3. All right, Victoria, you know, talk about your experience today. You got the one match, but uh, yeah. you know, just talk about it a little bit. Um, you know, it was a, it was a good match. I went out in very confident, uh, relaxed, um, just ready to go, and I really can't complain about my performance or my mindset. Um, definitely a few areas that I've already reflected and know it needs to work on, but, you know, it was what it was. I mean, I had a good taper. I had a a good lead up to this, so it's just a, a real hard draw. I was in a hard quarter, and I didn't, you know, uh, meet the style as well. What did you know about that girl coming in? Um, I wrestled her once before in Spain last year, so I knew she was tough. I knew she was really strong and long. I thought I made the adjustments I needed to, but I guess not. So. Both women lose, very disappointed for sure. But Team USA overall had a very good. Performance. Yeah, they they continued it on day two here, and that's that's really where all the points came. You know, Marulos obviously was a star, and then we got Reagan coming up next. We're going to get to that after the break. We'll take you through the final four U.S. women's results after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News, powered by Titan Mercury Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built.
Well, Allie Reagan started her fifth world championship strong against two-time university world medalist Lizzie of Hungary. She earned a 10-0 tech fall. Reagan dominated on her feet and got four takedowns and the victory. Reagan, the top seed, needed a big move late in her semifinal match against her Latvian opponent, trailing 3-2 in the second period after stepping out of bounds. Reagan came right back with a wicked headlock and pinned her opponent four minutes 43. The headlocks didn't come in the finals for Reagan, though it was all Kawhi of Japan scoring double doubles after doubles, but she's bringing home a silver medal to Zally Reagan. We're awfully proud of her. Reagan just couldn't get to her offense in the finals. The headlocks you know, were there leading up to there. That's how she got there, but Cal was the defending Olympic champion for a reason. Nothing's going to get past her. She did her homework for here. You know, she just, she went to those fakes, but she didn't pull the trigger on one of the fakes, and you know, really fakes are, are useless if you're not going to pull the trigger. <laughs> I've heard that before. All right, competing in her second world championships at the senior level, Victoria Anthony opened with a 28-second 10-0 tech fall over her Korean opponent, Chian. In the quarterfinals, Anthony dropped an 11-0 tech fall to Sasaki, but was pulled back in to the repechage. Anthony dominated hometown favorite Julie Sabati of France in her repechage match, leading 7-0 after the first period. After a four-point throw, a turn, and a penalty point, Anthony tossed Sabati to her back in the second period and was unable to adjust to hold for the fall. Now we head to the bronze medal match against Kim of North Korea. Kim struck first with an early takedown, followed by a step out to lead 3-0 at the break. Second period was all Kim with the takedown and a turn to push the lead to 7-0, and then another takedown and turn to take the bronze from Anthony with an 11-1 tech fall. All right, Vicky. Um, clearly, you know, a tough night for you. Not the performance you wanted, but uh, you know, talk about how how you were able to come through and you got fifth in the world. I mean, that's a great accomplishment, and you know, you should be proud of your efforts, right? How do you feel about that? I mean, there's not much to say. It's not what we came here for, so um, I just have to get better. There's a, I, we talked, I talked to the coaches after, and um, it's really getting like a, a best go-to attack that I can, I can get on anyone in the world, and um, yeah, I just have some clear things to correct. You know, I think we've made gains and gains and gains, but mm -hmm. it wasn't enough uh, for me to get a medal today, so. She just couldn't find her offense in that bronze medal match. Kim caught her stepping a couple times. You know, really that low-level stance was almost giving Kim a, a timing mechanism for her. She knew when she was going to stand up. Yeah. That's when she was, you know, doing those blast doubles. But she's going to be holding a spot at 48 kilograms for a while. So great tournament for Vicky. Well, the other two U.S. wrestlers competing on Thursday won preliminary bouts but lost in the quarters and were unable to compete in the repechage after their opponents were beaten in the semifinals. Haley Aguello at 53 and Tamara Mensa at 69. Here's Aguello's reactions after the World Championships. I feel like I had fun out there in my first two matches, and obviously I'm sad now, and it's, um, it's devastating, you know, when you work really hard and um, the outcome isn't what you expected. So, yeah, it's... It'll be hard, to, but I'll get over it, and I'll get back out there and work hard and come back stronger. Talk about the day as far as the performance of this last group. And, you know, I got two of the girls in the medal matches, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we started out strong, and our wheels fell off a little bit. Um, but, you know, I mean, they competed hard. I mean, we're just, we're just not quite there yet. I mean, we got some things to work on, but, you know, and, and uh, it showed. Showed it. Some of our youth and experience showed it, you know, and, and so we've got to got to work. We've got a lot of things to work on. Where's your head at for the rest of the quad with a uh, team this young getting the team trophy, by the second and third? Well, I think it's always important to get a team trophy, right? I mean, I, I think it's important to maintain where we've been, you know, and, and to build upon it. So uh, we got a good group of athletes, you know. I just think you know we need a little bit more grit, and we got to find that. You know, and we got to train that, and um, so we got some work to do. But it, but you know, it's like I said, we're not starting from scratch. I mean, we got, we got a good group of athletes right here, you know, and, and we just need to get better at what we do. Japan once again ran away with the team title. The U.S. and Belarus finished in second place. Tony, we're out of time for this week. Freestyle kicks off Friday and Saturday. You can, of course, catch it all on trackwrestling.com. For all of us at Global Wrestling News, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next week.